Hey folks, Docs and Wedge here, and today we're going to be talking about four tips across games that you can use in your virtual photography to make your photos better. These are going to be tips that transcend the boundaries of games. I've been doing photography for several years now as an amateur, uh, on and off for more like 10, and I recently got into video game virtual photography, photo modes and things like that, and I've noticed a few things from real world photography that translate really well to virtual photography. So I wanted to talk about that in a context that goes across different games rather than being for a specific game. So today I'm going to go over four and I'm going to use four different games uh, that I think demonstrate each example really well. All right. So the first thing I wanted to talk about was camera movement. This is something that you'll see a lot of newer photographers not think about until they've been doing it for a little while. And the reason for this is when you look at a photo or when I look at a photo, a lot of the times I look at it as though I'm looking through the photographer's eyes and I sort of view it with that lens, but that's not really what's going on. Uh, the photographer has tried to arrange the image in probably a different way than eye perspective, but because we're so used to interpreting things from first person perspective, when we first start taking photos, that is sort of our default setting. And you can see Cyberpunk 2077 even has a first person perspective here, which is what we're using. So if we look at this, I have done the photo up like I would do for like a normal photo. Um, we've got a picture of a car. I've got some depth of field to keep the subject in focus. I've got some parallel lines running through the image. Um, it's okay. It's not my favorite photo, but it's a fine photo of a car. And we've got this in the first person perspective. You know, like I said, this is how a lot of people view images. And so this is sort of how they assume images are taken. In reality, you should basically never use this camera type. I'm sure there are situations where it works, but for most of the time, first person perspective is not gonna be the optimal perspective. You're gonna wanna move the camera around. You shouldn't just be taking photos at eye level all the time. So. What I normally do is switch to drone, and I do this in all my games, but it took me a while in Cyberpunk to figure out the camera movement. So here, I'm gonna switch to drone. I have already arranged this image. This is your standard from eyeline, but you can see what a difference this makes when looking at the photo. The car is much more prominent. You've got the lines taking up much more of the scene. Um, those distracting elements in the background are no longer there. So yeah, you've cut out more of the distracting elements in the background and kept just the lines running through the image and kept it so the camera is focused more on the subject. In the other version, there's a lot more going on um, that isn't the car. So the, the idea that you can take a picture from a different perspective is something that a lot of people forget when they first start taking photos, but it's good to remember. And again, I, I really can't think of a time where I would want to use that first person perspective because you can always move your camera around. In Cyberpunk, you can just click to drag the camera and rotate it and go from all different perspectives. If you want the subject to be more in frame and more in focus like I'm doing here, you can bring the camera down and give the road more space leading up and give the car uh, more size. Bringing the camera down tends to make the things closer to the ground bigger. If you want to focus on a wide scene, you can bring the camera up to focus on like the background and make the car smaller. And you can also move around and rotate to get different perspectives that are not just your eye line. So that's my first tip. Remember that you can move the camera around. All right, so next up, I'm taking a look at Horizon Zero Dawn. And the next tip I wanted to talk about was vignetting. Horizon Zero Dawn has some really interesting vignette settings, so I thought it would be a good pick and also I think Horizon is one of those games that a lot of people are taking images of Aloy uh, rather than the surroundings um, whereas I think Cyberpunk a lot of the times is taking picture of the surroundings so there's a bit of a different audience and I think vignetting works really well when you're doing uh, portraits. The vignette settings are over here. You can do borders. I think that sort of goes with vignetting uh, but a vignette is a natural effect that happens that darkens the edges and it, it sort of softens the edges of the pictures. And you'll see if we increase the size, the edges get darker. It's sort of an oval over top. Stylistically, we can use this to keep focus on 
our subject. So you see, we might have some stuff down here at the bottom uh, that isn't really relevant to Aloy. Uh, we might have this line in the back or even like got a little guy back here um, that we might want to sort of cut out. So we can turn the vignette on and increase the size so that it sort of cuts out anything in the background at the bottom like that. But you know, compare this to something like this and you can see it just softens the picture up and draws more attention to the face. And then compare this, no border, no vignette, to this. So this is with the vignette and border really focusing in on Aloy uh, rather than having a bunch of stuff in dead space in the background. The vignette keeps the lighting on her face rather than on the background and stuff. So I use vignette on a lot of different photos. Obviously you have to have an intent there. If you have like a wide panoramic shot, a vignette is probably not what you wanna use. But for a lot of shots, especially when you have one large subject, putting a vignette to make the photo sort of fade out on the edges can give it a little bit more uh, pop, I guess is a nice way to say it. Okay, so I'm in Far Cry 6 now, and we're gonna talk about the next thing, which is thirds lines. So I think Far Cry 6 is a great example of this because by default, as you can see, there are no thirds lines. When you're composing your picture, you wanna be thinking about the lines of thirds. And the reason for this is things just tend to look nice when they align in some way to the thirds lines of the pictures. Uh, this is a pretty well-known technique for composing anything. So it's something you always wanna keep in mind, like how does my photo split up into thirds? And it doesn't have to be perfect. In fact, it probably shouldn't be, but it is a good guideline to go by and sort of a good way to start out. And then you can tweak your photo as you go. So what I normally do is immediately come in and show grid in any game. In Far Cry 6, it's turned off by default, which I think is a mistake. This should be on by default. And this sort of lets you see how you're aligned. So like we've got some alignment here, not much going on up here, not much going on down here. This is okay, but we could do a bit better, right? Like we've got some blank space here, lots of blank space around here. And so this could be a more appealing picture, especially with the lines just like sort of going back and forth. The lighting here is pretty nice. So we can actually like use that to our advantage. I want to try to cut out the back there. I don't really have another subject. This subject isn't great. But you can see when we think about like how we're aligning things on the thirds lines, even though this is a pretty boring picture in general, this looks much better than just the straight on shot did. So I definitely recommend whenever you're composing stuff, you know, even if it's just something like this, Put the thirds lines on so you can at least sort of get a sense of how it's going to look. You can even do something like this if you want to be like really, really uh, rule followy. You can even like line it up like this and get like straight up thirds lines shots, uh, which you'll notice this I think it looks a lot better than when we didn't have it lined up just because of the symmetry, which is neat. All right, last up is Riders Republic. And the thing that I always keep in mind that I'm gonna be showing today in Riders Republic is the edge check. Okay, so what is the edge check? So edge check is a composition trick that I basically always do before I'm done with my photo. And normally I do it when I'm starting my photo. So the idea is when we're taking a photo, we want to pick our subject and we also want our subject to be the center of attention. And a lot of the times having things off to the side or around the edges of the photo can cause problems and distract from the viewer. So like, I sort of like this composition right here, but if you look to the upper right where those two trees are and right behind the character, there's a ramp that's cut off up there. So we really either want the ramp fully in view or cut off completely. We don't wanna mix them. And I think right now having it fully in view is fine. We sort of have the mountains cut off as well, which larger objects like mountains can be okay to cut off if you wanna give a sense of scale. You can see on the left, we've got that one little tree there that's not cut off, so that's okay. I might want to just cut off all the trees if I can. You can see sort of messing around with this means we have to now think of the other side. So we've got that tree right on the edge. I wouldn't wanna leave it like that because it is actually like being cut off a little bit. I would either want to not include it like this or include all of it and maybe the, the other tree. 
like that. And so you can sort of see like if you have a photo that looks like this, it looks like you just didn't consider it and you just took sort of a snapshot, right? But if you do this and try to like make sure that the trees by the edge are all fully included, the photo feels a lot more cohesive like that. So that's the last tip in something that, you know, transcends, I think, even video game photography is just making sure that you're checking the edges of your frame. See, now that I've done this, I sort of have a little bit of blue sky directly above the character. And maybe I either want to include more blue sky or I want to remove it completely. I just don't want to have uh, distracting elements cut off sort of halfway through the frame because it makes it feel like the photo wasn't considered. All right, so that's my last pick. Uh, hope these tips were helpful. These are things that I think about anytime I take a photo in real life or in virtual photography. So hopefully they help you out and I will see you next time.